Hello, everybody. My name is Ben, and welcome back to One More Month, the podcast that ends when I graduate. We are down to 20 days now. If you can see on the timer, which will run the entire episode, I promise it's probably going to shut off. I plugged up my laptop this time. You can't see it, but just trust me. Today, I am joined by the Kirsten Cunningham. How are you doing today? We're going to shake hands because that was planned. Because, yes, we're men. We shake hands. We shake hands. Do you want to tap up? I mean, we can. There we go. Cool. All right. So, Kirsten, he is an admissions counselor at the University of West Alabama, but he is also an advisor for my fraternity, our fraternity, Delta Chi. Yes. But more importantly, and this is the biggest reason, kind of the reason you're here, you are- You guys made me cry already. You, know, you are the okay. probably, or you are the sole reason that I am at this school. And inadvertently, you are the sole reason for this podcast because now I'm graduating. Oh college. God, man, we're and doing you, this already. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. It's okay. like a senior send off. Yeah, it's kind of come full circle yes. to the little kid with the spiky hair in that gym <laughs> that was just running around everywhere trying to say, hey, can I help you, can I help you, can I help you? Oh, dude, I did. So I, I was uh, in the ad- ambassador program at my high school, which is the sole reason I met you, and mm-hmm. we'll get to that in a second. I only did that because my girlfriend was one. I, and, I figured. Uh, and because when we did the ambassador program, you got to be in, it It put you in a certain focus group, or like a whole mm-hmm. room. So we got to spend more time together. Oh, that was the only okay. reason. And also I wanted like a resume builder. Mm-hmm. But Cause also, you definitely needed a resume builder, right? I didn't do anything in high school, dude. Okay. Like I played soccer. I How did, did I not- art. Did I not pay attention? I did not know you played soccer in high school. I did. Um, if you look at me as a freshman coming in here, I look mm-hmm. like a soccer player. I have that basic haircut. Oh, God, you did. Yeah. I had you faded did. sides and like the little like comb over type. The eyes were always out. Yep. I remember you always had to. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's how I looked. Um, oh, freshman, <laughs> freshman fashion, dude. Freshman fashion. I've been looking at back at pictures. It's so bad. It's okay. It is like. Just thinking that shorts, I was looking even further back in like mm-hmm. Facebook, shorts that were below the knee were cool up yeah. to like 2017, 2018. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now it's like up here, yeah. full thigh out. Uh-huh. And S- sun's out, thighs out. Yeah. It's crazy that that was okay. It, I feel it's crazy. It's okay for all your thigh meat <laughs> to be out in shorts now, but it's okay. Y'all do what you want to do. You know? I, I, I have I was, short I shorts. I was a proponent so. of like, I'm looking back at high school and I was like rocking like some. It was like Nike elites, like just not like I don't even wear Nike now, just mm-hmm. because like unless it's like a sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. But just like bright orange, kind of gray oh, basketball God. shorts. Yeah, it was always like yeah, we're about to go do something athletic. That really was what your high school style was like. Yeah, or people were just in leggings twenty four seven and oversized shirts, and that's still kind of a. I feel like even in college, girls will still kind of rock that fashion. It's very. Uh, my girlfriend has a big point about American is that okay. we're in, like in a athleisure yeah. state all the time. Yeah. Always athleisure. It's always comfortability uh, over if it looks good. Mm. And see, that's actually one thing that bothers me. I'm going to not stay on the soapbox long. Yeah. But working in as an admissions professional, um, having to showcase what I feel um, in publications <laughs> is college life and college students. Everybody's in athleisure wear. I don't like that. I don't like it doesn't photograph well, doesn't look good. If you're wanting to like convey higher learning and stuff, stop walking around campus in athleisure wear all the time. I loved being in Europe because I was able to dress nice and uh-huh. not feel weird. Mm-hmm. I, if I dress like this, I'm, I'm dressing nice today for Ooh, all. I just realized you got on the cords. Oh okay, yeah, I got, I got some cords this weekend. Um, okay, nice. But if I, I don't, I, I couldn't wear this to like. A class without people wondering what's going on. Yeah, if I just wore uh-huh. this to like biology 03, like people mm-hmm. would think, why? why? Yeah, you'll, you'd be looked at. And I want a reason to dress nice. And mm-hmm. I want to be like, it's like when you go to prom in high school, you feel good because you look good, but yeah. everyone around you looks good. Yeah. So y'all do something now that's training where you wear a pin and tie. I think just the first Tuesday of every first month. Tuesday we're supposed to yeah. see. We did it every Tuesday when I was in school, like literally every Tuesday. That was our reason to dress nice. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, like you said, I would get looks every time three floors up in the chemistry because um, I had a chemistry lab on Tuesdays. The professor's like, why are you wearing a tie? Yeah. Um, it's Tuesday. And by the end of it, it's like, oh, it's Tuesday. No, I'll just take oh, the tie yeah, off. Delta and, so, yeah. and that, I think now we've made, uh, if I remember right, we did make rules that you yeah. didn't have to wear them if you had labs. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, it's supposed to be first Tuesday. I think we just say at every meeting, hey, wear your, your pin attire on Tuesday because mm. we probably forgot to last week. Yeah. It, it happens. And then sometimes I'll walk around and I'll see like, I'm going to call him out. I'll see E.T. walking through <laughs> the hallways <laughs> and just like sweatpants and like... <laughs> A Carhartt t-shirt and I'm like, uh-huh. dude, dude, we, we talked about this two days ago. Uh-huh. You could just, I'm, so I'm rocking like my like khakis and like a sweater or something mm-hmm. and he's, and I, he's, 
It's E.T. It's E.T. He's it's cool ET. people, though. Yeah. We'll, we'll let him slide. Everybody's favorite Chick-fil-A employee. Oh, man. Does he work in Meridian? No, he used to work at one in Tuscaloosa. Oh. So it's always his pleasure, even <laughs> when it's not his pleasure. He has that personality. I call. Mm-hmm. We're not going to rock. This is too much on E.T. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. it is. It let's, is. let's go back to it. Kirsten, introduce yourself. Tell him who you are. Basically. Okay, yeah. My name is Kirsten Cunningham because I'm going to look at you because this is conversational. conversational yeah. Yes, I work at the University of West Alabama where we do something that matters because there's truly something about this place. Wow. Is there more? I've been drinking the Kool-Aid here a little bit too long. Um, I also am the co-host of a podcast called True Comedy, a highly debatable podcast available everywhere. Everybody go out and listen. New episodes every Thursday. True except, Comedy yes, Podcast. Yes, it's kind of a play on true crime because I'm a true crime guy. And it's just a true crime that people think we're funny, me and Nick, but we kind of are. So <laughs> check it out. But yeah, I like to cook, do those things, um, meet cool people. My wife's amazing. She's the breadwinner. Out kicked my coverage. She teaches <laughs> kindergarten and writes books and publishes and all that jazz. I didn't know that. I didn't know she yeah. writes books. That's mm-hmm. crazy. What she has um, a children's book called Honey Stands Recital, and she has a young adult um, book series called Hot Tea and Laughter. And we also have a publishing company, Inspiring Honey Publications, that's actually housed here on campus. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I had no idea, though. So it's it's just, the t- is she writing more? Do we, yeah. Do we get a She's sneak peek? She's currently writing it. I can't let all the secrets out because um, I will actually end up dead. Okay, then we'll. Um, but she is publishing a couple things and just be on the lookout, y'all. Do you it's... get to look at it? See, listen. Does she let you? She lets me read. Okay, okay. I do read and I do provide some in- um, insight. But when it comes to editing, we just know Kirsten's too busy <laughs> to sit down and do it. So I'm just there for more moral support and just to make sure. Um, she's sane and able to do what she needs to do to get the books written and all that jazz <laughs> so yeah what's really funny is i was like she'll write a book in 10 minutes mm-hmm. if it's like a children's book literally she'll be sitting there i wake up in the middle of the night pull out her phone and write a book and guess what ben you said that t- um timer was going to run the whole episode that's crazy what if we, what if i just uh oh oh just oh, oh, ah! just I'm nicely touched and caressed it just i just there's there's mm. a there's a little a little guy back there and uh he is running on a treadmill. And like, he's not a hamster. He's an actual human. He's a little guy. It's like, like this big. His name is uh, w- Wilter. Not Walter. Was Wilter? Walter with an I. Okay. Wilter. Wilter. And Wilter. Uh, he powers his TV, and sometimes you got to give him a little tickle mm-hmm. and wake him back so that's, up. That's so We're awkward. gonna run with that. Oh, that's, okay, that oh, works. That's mm. Wilter. Do your job. Yeah, go, go. We got. You only got twenty more days left, buddy. Right, run, boy, run. I'm not gonna let. No, someone's not gonna let me live that down. No, they're not. That was a wild moment. Um, but yeah, I. Speaking of writing books, I found out my high school Spanish teacher, who I knew kind of like was into writing. Uh huh. Like last week, I found her on Instagram Reels, promoting her like two or three like young what? adult okay. uh, fiction books or whatever and she's just like fully into the like tiktok of it okay like, like she's doing like mm. three videos a day oh wow promoting these books like that's fully into the that's impressive because i can't post content regularly like at all, at all like i tried i just can't do it i like it i so i put out the i plastered mm. my uh promo video for the last episode everywhere mm-hmm. i could it mm. went TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, um, Twitter even last okay. night. Okay. Before it crashes. Apparently. I, this, I missed that. Listen, your podcast is probably going to outlive Twitter. That's crazy. Like. That's crazy. I, I logged on last night after our mm-hmm. event that we had, and um, I was like, what did I What did I miss? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Elon being Elon. Yeah. Cool. Richest African American ever. Richest African American ever. <laughs> there we go. I coined that term last night. That's Yes, you did. Oh, man. We're going to get ourselves canceled. <laughs> Um, but I found it really fun, I think, to just shorten down content. And I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to doing it this episode more because mm-hmm. we're telling stories more, yeah. having conversations. Last episode, it would have just been like a 30 second clip of me being like, I'm sad, which I will say the amount of people that have asked me if I'm okay over the past week is crazy. And I've been seeing like your comments like, oh my gosh, you're graduating already. Listen, people, try being the guy that like really helped you get it like Ben it's really weird okay yeah. <laughs> I know it's weird for you but yeah. you're gonna leave this place maybe visit once or twice over the next three years I'm gonna still be here your picture's still probably gonna be hanging in the hallway in our office area like oh I know that guy I wonder what Ben's doing 
Um, oh, Kirsty, you remember when you were in that musty gym trying to recruit kids? Okay, can I make a confession, Ben? Yeah, go ahead. You want to know the real reason you're here? What's up? Because I'm competitive. Oh. And the admissions counselor for another school um, may have told me that where you were thinking you were going, or maybe even had committed, that, um, Kirsten, you're not good at your job. I'm going to pick one student in here, and you have to convince them to go to your school. You were the student that was picked. <laughs> And I said, bet, game, set, match, let's go. And I did my job. What? <laughs> yep, I did my job. So when I was a senior, I had no, I didn't, uh, I had no clue what I was going to do. I'm kind of like, it's kind of mm -hmm. like gone in the same circle. I don't yeah. have a plan still. Um, but I was That's like not so much in the dirt of like, I have no idea where I'm going. Uh -huh. um, I was looking at. I think we can talk about it. I'm like I'm not very secretive about where I am. Yeah. I mentioned the University of West Alabama. In Livingston, Alabama. Yes. Um, people don't know my last name, though. Everyone knows my last name. My name's okay. Benjamin Shadden. I just dox myself. Who cares? <laughs> you can look that up easily. Um, but I had no idea. I was looking at maybe JSU because uh -huh. of a girl I was dating at the time. Uh, she was going there, and I was like, hmm, oh. Shocker. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's kind of what a lot of people yeah. do. Especially from my high school, mm -hmm. a lot of people just do nothing. Mm -hmm. Most people either go to a commu two of the, the two community colleges mm -hmm. we have, or they get married. Which I, I I said this when I gave a speech uh, at my graduation, or whatever. I was like, if you want to just do two years of school, you want to go to a four year, you want to start your life, have a family, whatever. If that's what you want to do, do it. Do it. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. But if you have even the slightest bit of ambition that you may want a little more time, a little more adventure in life, go yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. um, As you should. Yeah. But I was lost. I had, hadn't applied to any schools yet. I think I was also looking at, uh, I'm just going to say Montevallo mm -hmm. because- My hometown. Yeah. They were, I think it's only because I knew they were uh, like a liberal, liberal mm -hmm. arts school. That was and part I of our conversation. And I wanted design. Yep. And um, that was it. That mm -hmm. was like the only school I was like, maybe I'd applied to. I had found out that the financial aid there was going to be very bad for mm -hmm. me um, because I happened, I mean- I happen to. I did score. I, we, we know I scored very high on my testing mm -hmm. stuff. Even with even with a thirty two on the ACT, I was getting not not any not money. not really no. not real money. Um and yeah, we had that conversation. I was like, yeah, I no, it was you and the woman from South. It was the one from South Alabama. Hold up, no. Was it not South Alabama? It wasn't South. Where was she from? It, no, no, no. Jade, where she was at JSU. That's my friend Jade. Oh, she's JSU. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, Jade Chapel. I had to think because Jade was there. Shout out Jade, a a best friend. You can, you can send the story. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Um, but I took you to I took you to brunch. You did it was in our robotics room for some yep. reason. I don't know. Across campus. I can honestly say I have never stepped foot back at your high school after <laughs> that, or did I for your awards program? No, you didn't. No. Shock him because you couldn't make it. Yes. Okay. And I was like, who? I was like, where's Kirsten? I'm looking up here or whatever. And I, I see this dude. I'm like, he's like, hi, you been? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, Kirsten couldn't come. Hi. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to pretend. I'm like, okay. And let me guess. He he literally probably like bounced up out the chair, hopped up, came up, ran, kind of shook her hand because that's what Shaw does. Yeah. Yeah. Very high energy. Very yep. like mm -hmm. in the moment. Uh, very just in like, just very present. You yeah. Can tell. That's, um, that's him. And he gave a very good um, speech about me. Mm -hmm. It was like, um, I don't remember what he said. It was like one of those, like, some students go uh, above and beyond or whatever or something, oh, and this guy. He just... actually cared. I'm sorry. I'm going to let you in on a little thing. Like, no, my friend Shaw, he has, like, two speeches he gives. The one that we write that we say everywhere, and then the one that we give for, like, students we actually care about. Yeah. He actually did good. Good job, Shaw. It was very nice. I felt very good about it. Um, it made me feel good uh, to be able to be like, hey, I'm going mm. to this school. Um, and I'm getting a lot of money yeah. to go to the school. And see, that's where it clicked. Like, actually, after I actually had a conversation, nice. after I had an actual conversation with you, it was less of, okay, I'm just in this for a bit. I really do see some of myself in this kid because at the same time, like, when I was a senior in high school, had a lot of doors open for me, but didn't really know what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. so, West really helped me kind of figure that out. Like, there were lots of opportunities here, ways for me to get involved and just kind of figure things out. And I say that, and I still didn't know what I wanted to do after I graduated, hence mm -hmm. why I was working in this position. Kind of just fell in love with it. And you've still been here. What was your undergrad degree? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. But no, on paper, um, my degree says interdisciplinary studies, but I have a math and a theater degree when it's all said and done. Okay. 
why math why, and theater yeah why math that's also that's two very different my things. brain's funny and weird okay math and theater. i'm super analytical but there's also the super creative side mm -hmm. basically during a depressive episode from all the math being just stressed out by modern abstract algebra and probability and statistics one and two i decided hey curse remember you were a child actor and things no one's ever seen let's take some theater classes to keep you from unaliving yourself from the math courses. Oh my God. So I started taking a lot of theater classes. And so. So is it like a. I don't know how IDS works. Is it like a focus on. Well, and... <laughs> this is where we get creative. Okay. Because um, you're not going to see many more IDSs like mine. Basically, I have enough credits for a math degree, but also enough credits for a theater degree. Oh, okay. Maybe minus like two or three. So mm -hmm. it's just, hey, Kirsten, you fulfill the basic curriculum for this college and this college. So you have a degree. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Because at your time, you graduated in... Let's not talk. Well, my degree says 2015. 2015. Yeah. I was... You're about to say, but Kirsten, you were working here then. I was. I had one class, because um, I took a semester off, I think, for a minute. So I had one class that I needed to take to actually finish the degree. And I did that during my first or second year working in admissions. Okay. Because I was going to say, I know IMC started in 2013. I believe. No, 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 no. IMC started in... 20... It had to be at least 2012. Okay. Or it was formulating in 2012 and maybe officially on the books in 2013. Because Nick, the co-host of True Comedy Podcast, was the first IMC grad. Okay, okay. I know and, only know this because we had Calling All Tigers, and I believe I heard that IMC may have something like the 1835 Club, which is yes. a... Uh, the year UWA was founded, mm -hmm. I think we had something called like the 2013 Club or something, where it's like you pledged twenty dollars and thirteen cents. It was something like that. Well, that would make sense then. Yeah. Um, because I was going to say, I, when I was interested in, I knew I wanted to do something with design, mm -hmm. but that's not like a super please don't. That's we can't mess up this floor. This. Brandon I'm, will kill me. I'm not going to spill this. I'm a professional. Also, taking this moment out. Hi, Greg. You got upset that I didn't say hi or mention you at all in the 30 minute episode. And I mentioned Caleb like four times, so hi, Greg. And Greg's really like reason number two you're here. Greg is a big reason I'm here. Um, and I'll hopefully talk to him. Me and I him introduce are talk you to yeah. Greg as a senior in high school. We don't do that. Yeah, he also, when, I'm, I'm glad you said this because when he met me, and I will mm -hmm. talk about it more when I have him on. Uh, as you should. Which will be probably not next episode, but the following episode. We'll see how it goes. Um, he asked me what attempt at college this was for me. Mm -hmm. He thought you were old. Yeah, but you didn't look old. This is my. This is this is my. I'm, I'm gonna put it in post. This is my freshman ID card um, that I still have. It's in my phone right here, but I'm not pulling it out. Um, that's what I looked like as a freshman. It looks nothing like this now. Uh, people told me I look older than sometimes, but also I didn't have a beard and I had short hair. I don't know. Greg thought I was old, um, I which see. I feel like he he's told me before because the class before me that I just graduated had a couple students who were older like Weldon yeah that were had come to uh, college later so okay I could see that he was kind of in that mindset yes. you did kind of fit that mold. yeah okay. um but not knowing what I was going to do uh I knew I wanted to like design it's just been mm -hmm. like, like what I've done always is drawing but there was not a good way for me to be confident enough uh with I feel like what I have of like actual mm -hmm. like intelligence skills like, and yeah. intel intelligence to just abilities. be like i'm just gonna draw and like finding a competent way to make money out of that yeah um and imc felt like a very good even if it's just on paper safe. a very safe opportunity mm -hmm. to develop my skills in other places like that i hadn't maybe done a lot of mm -hmm. and let's, let's take this moment for you to tell people what imc means so i didn't really do a good job of it last time i started to um imc or integrated marketing communications is my degree at the university, there are three tracks. You have a sports communications track, you have a base communications track, and you have a graphic design track. Integrated marketing communications being the integration of marketing and communications. Um, what I study is graphic design. It is, I explained it last time as okay. problem solving, but visual. with making stuff look good. Okay. Visual aid. Um, stuff like photography, graphic design, um, any kind of design honestly not just like logos or like uh social media graphics a lot of social media based stuff a lot of videography and mm -hmm. audio based stuff which is why i have this wonderful facility to be able to record all this with such high production for something yeah. i came up with on the whim mm -hmm. uh, shout out to caleb again for this, helping me set up buddy thank you um but 
essentially that's what IMC is. IMC gives you all of the tools to, mm-hmm. to do whatever you want. Yeah. As long as it's in any kind of media driven or communications driven field. Yeah. And that's one reason I think it's easy to sell this program. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will stop doing a shameless plug for this institution at some point in time. <laughs> just not today because I'm on the clock. Mm-hmm. Um, but really that's why it has like 100% job placement rate. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to not feel confident getting a job when you leave. Mm-hmm. And you may not, like, you may still be in my place. You are given a lot. There's a lot thrown at you. Yeah. And you're not, like, you have the opportunity sometimes to find a field and just be like, I want to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm really good. You can be like, Max Potts, and be like, I really want to do photography. You can do Nick Noland and just be like, I really good like. Good at everything. Good at everything, <laughs> but I really yeah. like helping people mm-hmm. in any way possible. And... Some people, like me, who didn't really, or I still kind of found a track, uh but I want to do more. I don't want to design t-shirts for the rest of my life or just make social media graphics. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is really fun for me. Trust me. This is just step one, Ben. I trust me. You needed these skills for Mm -hmm. something that's going to be way bigger and better than anything you can think of right now. Trust Trust me on this. And I found, I remember, um, I don't know what that was. The British are coming. The British are coming. Yeah. Or the French in your case. Yay. Um, I don't talk about this a lot, <laughs> but I have, uh, when I was like, I grew up in the age of YouTube. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I was like 12, 13 when Please YouTube Please tell really me you have a bar- an embarrassing YouTube video. I have a channel with over 200 videos. What? Of everything from like old drawing videos uh-huh. to uh, stuff. I went through the Minecraft, I went through other okay. video games phases. I went through like the 2017, 2018, like high, like comedy like gaming video uh-huh. compilation games um and i loved it i loved creating obviously it never it just never shot off um, mm-hmm. and after making 200 videos some of them i will say about maybe i'll probably say like 50 of them are good quality cool. i would feel good about a yeah. lot of them were just like i'm gonna play this entire game for like two months and i'm just gonna record it and it's mm-hmm. not really that interesting it was before twitch was a thing and yeah and like i never i live in a rural air, rural mm-hmm. area so like wi-fi twitch streaming doesn't it's not yeah. great um and youtube now has completely changed from when i did it um but after oh, you spend the good old days, you spend like three, four years making videos and it just never pops off. And honestly, I think it was because I was insecure about showing that to people. And mm-hmm. I, this time I fully thrown that out the window. I'm saying I'm shamelessly plugging. I'm yeah. being proud of this and I'm showing it to everybody. Yeah. But I fell in love with it again. Editing this video when I told you earlier uh, and you for you, all of you that watched last week's episode, the intro bit, uh, this logo right here, that didn't exist until the morning I published the video last Monday. Um, and I almost just waited another couple days to post it because I was not happy with the final mm-hmm. product. And then mm, I- Somebody's a perfectionist. Yeah, I, I feel like I didn't want to rush it just for the sake uh-huh. of rushing it because no one knew it was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So I had- And that's what makes it so great. Honestly, if when you don't have to confine yourself to, okay, I want to do this by this date because somebody makes me is making me do this and mm-hmm. you can just do you, Yeah, that's what- I promise you it's so free and there's no expectations for this. Yeah, there's there is. this is strictly a passion project and I wanted to make sure I felt happy and then mm-hmm. I got the intro mu- when I, I got the intro music I was like this could be good I cut it a little bit edited mm-hmm. it up hit the little little circle transition button that you'll see at the beginning of the video I just got ecstatic because I was mm-hmm. like this is what I love doing I love entertaining creating stuff for it to like to entertain people um, and it's a incredibly mm-hmm. like niche category mm-hmm. to fit into like if you get lucky and you're able to hit it off in this market it's awesome yeah i think it's one of the most freeing mm-hmm. forms of like a job yeah if you can make money off of it and like l- make a living off of you it. can and when i tell you treat every day whatever career you go into as a passion project when you start losing that passion that's when it starts it's time to start mm-hmm. finding something else honestly if you cannot continually yes you're gonna have bad days i'm not telling everybody to quit just because you have a bad day at work no but i'm saying if you really do not have passion if you really feel like okay i'm just counting um beans or i'm just sitting here not doing anything that you are really passionate about it's time to leave time to find something else there's nothing wrong with that especially nowadays people do not stay in jobs long it's long we are long past the days of people working at the same establishment for 20 20 plus years honestly academia is the last place that exists and that's going to change at some point in time (laughs) um so just find things constantly reinvent yourself constantly educate yourself and just learn new things and 
do something that matters. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was not a plug for the institution. That was really oh me being serious yeah. like. That's, uh, we, I, was, I was sitting again on the, uh, mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't talk about this because no, they haven't no. released it yet. Right. Um, we'll our, talk off. Yeah. We'll talk after this. She was this. talking to me the other day and she was like, I'm sorry to release this. Well, I want to use this. I keep trying to use this. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I came up with that. But uh, not, we can't talk about that. So we're no. going to skip this and go back Transition to. Transition on. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, what you were talking about, being passionate about it. I mm-hmm. think I'm glad that I capped this. Like it's a limited series. Yeah. So I don't have to stretch it down. I don't have mm-hmm. to. Because honestly, when I was thinking, if I do this even twice a week, I put out eight episodes. Do I know eight people I want to interview or talk to or like enough? Or eight people that's worth having on here. Oh, the amount of people here. that are like, hey, can I be on your podcast? Like have yeah. hit me up wanting to be on it. And some of them be like, yeah, sure. Some of them like, we could talk and have fun. But like, is it going to be beneficial mm-hmm. for someone to sit for 30 minutes and listen to mm-hmm. this? Um, and that is... Like it's, it's, I don't want to make this live past its lifespan. I don't yeah. want to kick a dying horse yep. or whatever you're supposed to do. And that's one reason I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh my God, there's Ben, Ben, Ben again, doing something that I really do think is really, really smart. Like really smart. Cause this is coming up, coming out at the perfect time. And even if people find this, let's say a year <laughs> from now, yeah. someone in that transition phase is going to re- really, really benefit them. So, yeah, I, I think I described it to someone the other day that it is a good blend or good balance of a time capsule for myself mm-hmm. to be able to look back in five years and be like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, that's how I was feeling. Yeah. That's what I was going through. And I maybe I did used to look like Keanu Reeves. What? You're going to be like, oh, I did used to look like Keanu Reeves. If I'm still rocking this look in five years, I will be surprised. I honestly was going to cut my hair before graduation, but then chickened out. Um, my girlfriend really likes it. And as long as she's liking it, I feel confident enough. And I kind of, I've kind of, embraced it full mm-hmm. force in the past especially does, with this i don't for those of you who know me i don't ever go out and not wearing a hat that is very true and i can't wear it because these lights cast a shadow on my uh-huh. face and it's ugly and so i have just embraced it and i am learning to like it a lot more i got I just, compliments on my hair um shout out to you know who you are complimenting me on my hair after watching the episode so many mm-hmm. that's I'll, I'll talk about i want to i'll talk about the hours of the episode and what does bit. your mom think of your hair my mom hates my hair my mom <laughs> thinks i look like jesus my mom my mom was used to a clean shaven she uh-huh. she also went to a, a cosmetology school got a, wilter spin the wheel oh my gosh he's ah will wilter no snacks no snacks no wait that's good uh that's off center it's off center but it's, it's okay like, i wish i could animate it to be a little boop boop but um oh my god taking that, me back to old school microsoft i mean windows 98 screen savers <laughs> but my mom uh has cut my hair all my life mm-hmm. she i think one of my first haircuts that wasn't my mom doing it was the reason i have long hair now uh, because I, she I'm was used about, to me. Are you about to get, um, are you about to make your mom mad? I'm just going to no, 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 think no, no. about that. Okay. No, but say, cause this is going to live on the internet forever. No, no, no. It's making the person that cut my hair wrong. Okay. Um, so my mom has come here on my life. She's used to a clean shaven. Cause I didn't know I could grow a beard before I got to college. Um, and then you're like, I'm going to be a man. It's November. I'm not going to shave. It was, yeah, it was, uh, there's a story to it, but I don't feel like sharing it. It's a, it's yeah, a not everything's it's for everybody. Story. Not everything's for everybody on the internet. Um, but she was used to that me. Mm-hmm. And I left for a year, came back with a beard. Mm-hmm. Quarantine happened. I didn't really do the growing out my hair thing. Then it came to my sophomore spring. It would have been a year and a half ago now, probably. Almost two years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a haircut. No, actually, probably about two years ago now because I got a haircut here in Livingston. And it was so bad that I said, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to grow my hair back out. I remember that. Yeah. And I'm just going to just grow my hair out because why not? Oh. Uh, and it went through a good few stages of just being really raggedy. Yeah. It was, you have to, you, and that's why I started you wearing had the Yankees hat on yeah. all the time. Oh, I'm so glad I got, I embraced the Yankees hat around then because it gave me a reason to wear it. Oh. Uh-huh. It had like this gross, like, in the uh-huh. and the awkward stages. And then it finally just. Yeah, and then the reason my girlfriend likes it so much is because she met me with basically long hair about a year ago now. Mm-hmm. So that's all she knew of me too. So it's just completely two different. It's, it's whenever you entered my life or I entered your life is the version of me you know. So all these new guys in like our fraternity or whatever that I'll show pictures That's of why me. they're so freaked out by short hair Ben. Yeah. They, they don't know that it per- they never and met no me. facial hair Ben. Okay. Yeah. They never met me. And uh, it's funny when I run back into someone from high school 
because they're like, who are you? Yeah. The first time I went back home, uh, my freshman year with a beard mm-hmm. and I went to like this festival in my city. People are like, what is, who is, yeah, it was fun. Who is this old man? Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Um, I don't remember how we got on before my hair. Ben, I don't know what we're talking about. I don't know either. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, okay? As someone who's been podcasting for a while now, um, I never remember what I say, okay? Uh, I was just going to let you know. I go yeah. back and edit shows like I said that. Yeah. Um, so you could have told me we were talking about Marion who had a little lamb. <laughs> and I would have said, oh, sure, yeah, let's keep going. Because the theater guide me is the improv yes and. So yes I'm going to yes yeah. and what What else yeah. are we going to talk about? I, well, you mentioned this earlier, and I wanted, to, okay. I wanted to bring it up a little bit. Why do you keep calling me back for the marketing shoots at the at the university? I feel okay. like I've been at your. I feel bad for you losing me as a marketing tool for this school. Honestly, Ben, because I know you'll be there. Yeah. Like when I get there, are certain people that I know will be there, and it is the hair, because some you dress in a sense what I consider timeless, um, blocks of colors, no visible logos. And at different times, I can never tell your age. You constantly just stay about the same age, no okay. matter how you look. Yeah. So, and it is funny if you go back and look at the picture. I'll I'll put this picture up too. This is a picture that's hanging in the admissions office. Oh, you in the hammock? Year. Yeah, mm-hmm. me in the hammock. It looks nothing like this guy. No, it doesn't. Um, and you put up the most recent one from the shoot, which is that stupid picture on the website landing. That's is just a bad Listen, picture. Why didn't they edit out the burn on your leg? Oh, like, yeah. That's what I don't get. Yeah. Why didn't they? Even uh, who cares? Um, well, I've clearly it's bloody yeah. and pussy. Or, oh, no, okay. I'll, I'll show this one. I'll show this one. This is the one for the like apply now button. Oh, the you and the me and the laptop. I love that picture. <laughs> I actually really like that picture. Um, I made that button. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I it's weird because I did not like I. I came here and I recorded a little radio bit for the university mm-hmm. and I was thinking, what do I want to say? And it's crazy that this is a school that I've been able to make my, like a name for myself and feel like I am actually somebody, like somebody on mm-hmm. campus that almost, well, I say probably 75% of people know. At this Dude, point. you have an office. I do have an office. <laughs> okay. I do have an office. Slight flex. It is until people want to ask you for help all the time. Right. There's a, there's a degree of like being in a position of not like trust it, yeah. and yeah people know like know your work and mm-hmm. they trust that you're going to produce good work so they want your help with everything and, and this semester has been sleep yeah the semester has been so much freelance work and mm-hmm. i love it because i'm getting paid for it oh, okay so I was about to, ben we're about to have this conversation listen what have i told y'all don't do anything for free don't get yeah. taken advantage of even though if anybody that knows me is watching this says oh kirsten you get taken advantage of all the time there's a difference welcome back it, uh there was a snowstorm and it it knocked out the wi-fi yeah willard was just weird for a minute willard willard look i changed that man's name willard wilter wilter, wilter. wilter. there we go willard. willard is the guy is the tall guy in the fraternity that is why i know that name <laughs> i'm sitting like why do i know a willard <laughs> where did willard come I just, from i just realized that his name is not william and it's willard it's willard, willard. who names <laughs> you were born in the night like in the 2000s where did we get Willard from? These kids that are coming into university and are born in 2003 and four. Listen to me. So weird to me. Ben, I see birthdays. Like, I know where I was that day. <laughs> like, vividly. I could probably pull up a picture on Facebook where I was. Oh, my God. No, I couldn't. Not Facebook. No, they're not that. I'm not that old. Okay. Where? Never mind. I'm not going to ask that. No, ask, ask away, Ben. Where were you at on 9-11? Um, I was sitting in Coach Week's seventh grade history class while listening to Ms. Beard run down the hall because her husband was supposed to be in the World Trade Center. He missed his connect and train that morning. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't sleep for two days after that. Oh, my gosh. I was... S- since you asked. I was n- almost I was a sixth year grade. Old. I was almost a year old. Boy, shut up. Yeah. Shut I have no... Uh, well, at least you were alive. I was alive. Because it's all these people, that only thing they know about 9-11 is the history books and that President Bush doesn't like black people. That's crazy. Sorry. Sorry. You no, may no, have to... I don't... I was not... I don't have any remembrance of anyone. No, my thing was just... I had to quote I don't Kanye. think I knew who the president was before Obama. That was the first time that I was... Did my dumb self just ask myself who was the president before Obama? Boy, you were alive. <laughs> My uh, uh, acknowledgement of it was Monica Lewinsky. Uh, Just playing. Was it Clinton? It was Clinton before? It was Bush. Bush. What? Twice. Oh, 
I don't see. I don't know. But Dan Clayton. Uh, I'm, uh, yeah. It's okay. history. Cool. Oh goodness. Neither of us have history degrees. We're good. Yeah, history degrees. Mm. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Read, read some books. <laughs> Teach some people. Mm. If oh. you're lucky. We have so many people that have uh, history degrees that are gonna. Yep. Listen to this. <laughs> hey, you should have gotten a theater major. <laughs> right. You, you could have been an admissions counselor. Yep. Because that pays off. How, like, this is a thing I wanted to bring up. Okay. And this is the probably realist. Being, put yourself, everything you know right now. Okay. Back in my shoes right now. Mm-hmm. Would you go into the same job field? Like, me rewind six years or me be your age and would I become an admissions counselor? You being your, if you cont- re- cont- retained all your knowledge but you are, you're about to graduate. You are whatever your age you were when you got into your job. Okay. Oh. Or would you? I would probably still do it for a year or two. Actually, I would stick with my plan, which was to do this job for two years until I find something else to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I just so happened to fall in love with my job. And that was unexpected because let's put it this way. I was not looking for this job. Mm -hmm. I was actually um, at another place of employment, a place where I worked for 10 summers at a summer camp. We'll just be that way because I'm just going to be nice about it for Mm -hmm. once. I was working at a summer camp. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, Kirsten, you're going to go be the director there because that's what you were being trained to do is be the director at that summer camp. But for some reason, they kept losing your paperwork. It wasn't getting processed, so you weren't getting paid. So you were about to go in and just show your behind to these people. (laughs) But I got a phone call in the car from um, a vice president here asking me to come work in admissions. And I'm like, how did you get my phone number? (laughs) I don't think we've ever had a real conversation before. Um, and it literally it was maybe a 20, 30 minute conversation. Hey, Kirsten, you want to come work for me? Sure. Cause apparently I'm not employed right now. Um, and like I said, it was during the summer. Hey, can you be down here in two days? Huh? That's good. And you were living, where were you living? Mada? Yeah. This was like on a summer break. Like it was oh, in between. Back home. Oh. This, yeah. I was back home. I was in Montevallo. I'm like, huh? Two days. The school's open during the summer. <laughs> <laughs> you want me there in two days? <laughs> So fortunate enough, um, just start a full. That's such a weird turn, a small turnaround for starting a, like a a real job, job yeah, a, like a legit job. Like move your life down here, yeah. Out. Um, luckily, Nick, co-host, best friend, a shout out, let me crash at his house, him and his wife, for like a hundred dollars a month, because oh, wow. oh, I was poor, poor. Like uh, what I was, I'm not gonna tell y'all what I made originally starting this job. Let's just say no one makes that little bit of money anymore starting a job for a reason this was, what like, year? This, was... this was six seven years ago so, yeah so math 15 Stop. 14 it, don't ask me that. it it was at least 15 okay. it was yeah it was 2015 because i finished my degree december 2015 okay yes okay. 2015 remember i said i had a math degree earlier let's not charge it to my head not my heart sometimes simple math don't work for me. <laughs> um but yeah Fell in love with the job. Did not know what to expect. Um, the year I met you, I can tell you that year specifically, I had a breakdown sitting in a um, micro tail in Tuscumbia, Alabama with the Little Caesars pizza in my lap. I cried because I didn't know what the hell I was getting myself into. What is Kirsten doing? Why are you up here trying to tell people about this school that they've never heard of? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I honestly wouldn't change it. I'm going to explain to you why, though, because everything happens for a reason. I've learned a lot in this job, honestly, really just how to be more tactful and respectful. I tell people all the time, it's easy to get your first job. It's hard to keep it if you don't know how to talk to people mm-hmm. and deal with people and really interact. And Kirsten had a bit of an ego. <laughs> Kirsten still has a bit bit of an ego. It it just is what it is. We all do. I still, everybody, you should feel confidence in yourself because not anybody else is going to a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also got to learn how to check it. There have been times where I've maybe said a thing or three that I shouldn't have said. Um, Maybe should have just rewound that and maybe not have sent that email and that heated bit of a passion. Um, But yeah, I wouldn't change it. I would change my degree though. Mm. Do you think, would it? Oh, and I would have an IMC degree. Oh yeah. I just would have did that. What do you, okay. And then to kind of take that question and twist it. What if you were in my shoes as in like you were graduating college now? Oh, I know what I want you to do. What, what would you do? 
If yeah. you if you, if it was you, you were graduating. Say you had gotten an IMC degree. Yeah. And you like this is this completely like n- this like twenty mm-hmm. twenty two. Mm-hmm. Literally, I can tell you exactly. You need to be looking for jobs at creative agencies that service things like higher ed. Mm-hmm. One, because you're young enough and they're looking for people like you and you can create all types of content you want. And I'm not saying go and work for an institution. If I were you, you got some friends who you've mentioned before, y'all need to make a, make a creative agency and that's what you need to do. Because the 40s and 50 year olds are aging out there looking for younger talent. If I had the money, I would start it up and make y'all do all the work for me. Like I'm, I'm actually serious being that's what y'all need to do. I sat around with um Kate during, Kate is the... Mm-hmm. Social media her, marketer. Yeah, she works. Job, title. I don't want to butcher her title, but she does a lot. She does in a lot. The she helps us a lot during the office. Calling all tigers. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sat around with her and talked a lot. She got like a heart to heart with like everything mm-hmm. there. That's um, what she does. Yeah, it was really, mm-hmm. really inspirational, uh, telling us about everything, and asked just getting like trying to dig into us mm-hmm. and ask what are the questions. And I had to be like, oh hey, if you really want to know how I feel, you can go watch this part. I told her about. I was like. She asked the question, what would you do? Money, sun, option, what would you do? And I told her, I would probably do this. This kind mm-hmm. of uh, You can get paid to do this. Kind of, yeah. Um, University signed. Ben, when I tell you the money is out there for it, mm-hmm. you can make a living, a really good plush living. You, Nick, maybe get Ethan to help. <laughs> like, you have the friends and the connections. Mm-hmm. That you just small, you start small and grassroots. Yeah. Honestly, there's a company out of Birmingham that that's how they started. Small and grassroots. Honestly, when we get done with this, I'm actually going to send you two people's contact information that I need you to be in touch with because they'll get you some work. That's called networking. I'm, that's what you're here for. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's amazing the amount of connections I've made mm-hmm. through school. I think that is by far the best thing I've gained. And the only reason I think I, I think I know Nick. We're going to talk about Nick. Nick is an incredible human. Nick is the probably like peak of what someone can be. Um, wow. And I recruited y'all both to go to school here. Dang, this school should pay me more. He is what I want to be in the, in the like idea of being an organized and mm-hmm. like, not what's the word I'm thinking of? Like have, not having a plan, but like he's always looking towards the future. Yeah, he is. He's very forward thinking. He, forward thinking, um, yeah. yeah. That is what like the peak of that, what I want to do. Um, and Greg has talked to me about this a lot. And what I'm missing right now is just any type of business skills. I am fully on the work side of creating, but I, if I'm having the, e- I'm having, I'm exposing myself. I'm having the email conversation about how much I'm about to get paid for this. I want to die because I'm like, I don't know how to have this conversation. You, this is why you pay someone else to do that, Ben. That would be the end what, goal. See, this is what your parents own a restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. Ben. That's where that business acumen comes in. Talk to them. They've had to make hard choices. When I say, honestly, you are in the perfect spot. Um, You have a chair of your department here who, (laughs) when I tell you, will go to bat and teach you how to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. She will teach you how to have those conversations. (laughs) She won't let you sell yourself short. Oh, they like, they will not let me do it. I know, like that. Uh, My mom won't. My mom. Mm -hmm. Greg has this saying that you will you. Don't do any work for free unless it's for your mom. Yeah, I do work for my mom a lot. Um, last thing, I mean, I I produce all of her merchandising typically, mm-hmm. any kind of like promotional material we need at the restaurant. Um, but I made her new menus when she wanted some new menus, or whatever, and she paid me for them better than a lot of people mm-hmm. maybe at the school have paid me for things. Um, and I was like, you didn't have to do this. And he was like, no, you're gonna you're gonna get paid for your work if you're gonna do it. Um, and I love the fact. I think it also comes with the fact that maybe. I've been working since I was 15 and mm-hmm. I'm grateful of that. My mom has had me, my brother, my sister all in the restaurant working. And that got me probably out of my shell a lot. And I'm very glad I'm very like a sociable person that mm-hmm. I'm always be able to talk to people. Um, and I don't think I realized it until later in here. That you're probably sitting on your bed thinking, Oh my God. Uh, Cause in a sense, you probably leaps and bounds above some of your peers in some areas. So like, Oh, that's where that came from. Yeah, I had to sit there at a, at a front desk at a 15-year-old who's supposed to be awkward and not know what to say mm-hmm. and take orders for people, which a lot of people do. That is a very typical job for middle America. Yeah, mm-hmm. for especially teenagers going to your first job. Mm-hmm. My difference being that it is inside a, it, like it's in a city of people who watched me grow up, and I don't mm-hmm. know half of their names. Mm-hmm. And I have to have a conversation like we have been best friends for five years yeah every time i see them and they always know me and it actually helped me know a lot of people better 
Um, and I think that's different than if you go work at McDonald's, where the person does not care about seeing you. Right. They care about getting their Big Mac. Right. And you also have to have that love because it's your family's business. Yeah, I'm representing my family. I'm mm-hmm. representing all the work my grandfather and now my mother uh, have put in. I got to say my grandmother too because I have mm-hmm. to say she's probably – she's running the, sh- the background in the shadows um, of all my family. Mm-hmm. Everyone – that is put in work for this restaurant. I'm now representing them, and mm-hmm. I when I go back home, I try not to work because it's not. I don't love it. Restaurant work is hard. Uh, dealing with people face to face about their food is awful. Mm-hmm. Um, Everybody has opinions. Yeah, and I yeah every and I just it's not. I learned that's definitely not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think my mom's been like, hey, don't end up doing this either. Get um, go to school, get a degree, get out of here, get out of here. Yes. Um, and saying that, she definitely doesn't want me to leave. I think the this past year I've put her through mental hell because there's a 50% chance I don't end up living in this country. And she hates that. Is dreading she hates. every minute of it. Um, she wasn't a fan, of, I think, of me leaving. And I think mm-hmm. one of the best things, uh, one of, leaving like to come down here. Mm-hmm. I think she wanted me to because there is only so much you can do in Morgan County. Yeah. It is by far one of the best things I've done is left home because I see people from back home. Even when I go back home now, there's nothing to do. I'm dreading going back next week because I'll go to like, I'll go to my sister's friend's giving. She wants me to come home mm-hmm. uh, for that. And then I'll sit at home for like three days, maybe see like my two friends I have back home yeah. to actually hang out with. And then I will just like, okay, what do I need to do? Go to Thanksgiving. And then I'm just yep. going to be like, oh, I guess I'll go back to Livingston. At least yeah. I have like Caleb here or mm-hmm. I go to Tusk. Like, I would love if this school was in a position like where I live because it's super royal, but there's stuff, there's so many cities around here. The only mm-hmm. thing about Livingston is the proximity two things i don't want to spend two hours of my night driving to tuscaloosa and back yeah um but that is also it's a, it's a thing i think that i wasn't prepared for is that i've made all these friends from here and uwa being such a local college for so many of his students live here or live south of here no one lives in huntsville alabama but that's where you're wrong there are more than you think there's nathan trainer <laughs> You're right, but they're they're more they're just older, um, or they didn't get the on campus experience. Mm-hmm. And old buddy slacking once again over here. Oh, dude, I got I turned. You know what's crazy is I turned it off. Mm-hmm. I turned the auto sleep off on that, and it's, it did it's, not care. It's probably when you hooked it up with HDMI. I decided I'm gonna do what I want to do. Yeah, last time it didn't even do the bin. My I think it just died. Oh, okay. The laptop died completely, mm-hmm. and so we have this great moment of me going talking i'm like oh look and then it's like oh oh there's no countdown yeah 20 hours 20 days 17 hours that's so surreal uh, when i come back from thanksgiving and it's gonna be 13 days that's good, where i'm gonna hit like have you cried yet uh about leaving or just like just in general yeah okay i i'm real i said because really, if you hadn't i would actually be concerned i'm that, really um, bad at like crying but i do have moments where i'm like even just driving byron's golf cart through campus the other day. i drove it from the sub to here to Wallace. Like, this is a mess. Yeah, it's, How, I'm gonna do this. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> it is like that though, mm-hmm. because especially after you move off campus, you lose so much of that feeling of just yeah. being, being part of it, mm-hmm. and you feel like you miss out on so much. Um, and you have that sensation. I'm like, I have like a flat, like a deja vu moment. Like I'm like walking in between like Selden and uh, Spieth, Gilbert or whatever, Gilbert, and Gilbert, like all that area. And like, this is so weird. Like this is such a beautiful moment right here, and it's about to be gone. I think oh, I, it's all hitting me like more and more. I have like two weeks until I'm just done with this place, um, as like part of my life. I said coming into this, I wasn't gonna cry, but I also have not had a lot of sleep, so emotions yeah. be everywhere. I've already cried once. I woke today, up. So. I got home at three last night, so yeah, that makes okay. sense. Um, it be that way sometimes. It's Thursday. We know uh-huh. what happens in Livingston on Thursday. Yep. It was Bible um, study. Lots and lots of Bible study. No, I should have just left that on the curb and not talked about it. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's We're doing all this stuff. We're cha- getting ready to just swap over the semester. And I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. Normal routine. And then I'm like, oh, no, I'm just not coming back. So... Do you have any type of plan? Like, what happens December 10th? Go towards wrapping it up now. Um, I do want to ask. Okay. This is something I plan to ask everybody. But, and you kind of said a lot of it. What is your advice to me and to everyone out there that feels like this right now? Given your experience, you kind of said it. But just to run it back, like, 
two things. Yeah. You don't have to have it all figured out right now. Mm -hmm. The same kind of apprehension you had when it was picking a college, mm -hmm. what to do. You're probably feeling that exact same thing now, but also with a couple more financial strains with yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. It's okay. Get what needs to be done, done, and it's going to be all right. And my last piece of advice, honestly, just have fun. <laughs> Literally, I hate to say YOLO, you only live once, but you do. Hmm. Make your life what you want it to be. And yeah, don't let anybody tell you no. You were in college when YOLO was like popping, weren't you? I would hope so. I hope I was not in high school when YOLO was popping because I'm, no, I had to have been in college. Yeah, I had to have been in college. Yeah. Um, Speaking of college, did you ever listen to that stupid Asher Roth song, I Love College? No. Please don't. Okay. There were groups of people. No, actually, I want you to listen to it and go actually watch the music video for it, okay? When they made music videos. And I just want you to picture those type of people on this campus everywhere. No, yeah. yeah. It oh, was that's gross. what it was like in 2013? It was, it, yeah, it was gross. Oh. It was actually gross. Well, Puka you all do that too because yeah. I'm going to have fun. If, if I'm going to suffer, you're going to suffer. Puka shells and Hollister shirts everywhere. Oh. Mm. Oh, yay. Flip flops, visors. <laughs> it was great. Said no I'm one ever. Look back in that disc and think, wow, that's bad. Like, that's just 2000 to like. 2013 like that's just an awful era i mean no it was just an awful time to be alive yeah. let's just let's just be completely honest one everybody thought we were gonna like die every other year yeah. um so it was just crazy people didn't know what they were doing people still hey, don't know what they're doing i don't you know, know what i'm doing and that's the point of this yeah. episode um thank you all for listening thank you kirsten welcome, this is my man. moment to be heart to heart thank you for getting me to the school it actually has been the best four years of my life three and a half we'll call it three and a half but it has been the best decision i've ever made was taking you to that lunch um I cannot thank you enough for this. This has been incredible. And I am way too far in debt to you for this. It's incredible. Thank you very much. Well, Ben, um, you did all the hard work. I just gave you a, pic a book with some pretty pictures in it. And told me I can make a lot of money here. I did. And you did. <laughs> I did. I did. Financially, UWA sent me yes. up pretty good. Um, but thank you everyone for watching. Kirsten, if you have anything you want to plug, you want to plug your podcast again, go I ahead. I mean, everybody check out True Comedy, hashtag True Comedy everywhere. Um, listen to the podcast. And if you know someone that is of high school um, graduating senior age and is looking for a college, we're always welcome to have you at the University of West Alabama. I had to do it. Uh, that's crazy. But yeah, all of his links will be in the description. Yep. Um, follow the one more month podcast tiktok did you just forget your did you get forget the name of your podcast i didn't think if the tiktok handle was the same okay i didn't remember it's i knew it was different because someone has one more month on tiktok which is weird because like everywhere else it happened to be a name that wasn't taken a lot of stuff mm -hmm. um but yes thank you everyone for watching thank you for listening if you're on spotify please like and subscribe if you'd like to um I appreciate all of you of course for sticking out this long this is a extra long episode but i had a lot of fun. This was yeah, nice. it was fun. This Thank was you for having me, Ben. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. It. I didn't cry one time. Yeah. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> well, I'll see you all next time. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. I like this awkward wave. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Bye.